party people. This is the Stealth Arms Platypus, four and a quarter inch, and this is the most advanced double stack 1911 that I've seen so far, because nobody else in the world makes one like it. Not only does it accept Glock magazines, but it also has a few other tricks up its sleeves that not a lot of people have spoken about in their YouTube videos. Platypus four and a quarter inch, 105 yards. Let me go for the 220. So welcome back party people. Hope you guys are doing awesome today. Now it's important to note that I did not say that this was the best double stack 1911 ever because the word best is very subjective. But after extensive testing with this platypus, I'm very comfortable in saying that it is one of the most advanced. So what we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna explore the platypus in all its ins and outs. That way we can find out what are the three features of this that make it so advanced. We're also gonna find out what's in the box and how it runs on the range in regards to the recoil impulse and reliability. And then we're gonna cover the cons about this because although this was sent out to the channel for testing and evaluation, nobody paid me to make today's video. And just because somebody sent something out to the channel, it doesn't guarantee a positive review. If you don't believe me, just go check out this video here. Those were sent to the channel. They didn't get great reviews. Also, you wanna make sure you watch until the end of this video because later I'm gonna show you guys a sneak peek of some new stuff that is coming out from Stealth Arms that nobody else has ever covered in their YouTube videos before. And I definitely, know that you're going to want to see that. Also, it should be noted that as we go throughout this video, I will create a parts list for everything that we're talking about. The best way to find that parts list is the first link in the description. I'll also pin that link in the comments section for you as well. And if you guys could do me a huge favor, hit the subscribe button for me. Only reason I ask is it not only does it help the channel, but whenever you hit the subscribe button on any video on YouTube, it trips the algorithm to start recommending these videos out to people that have never been exposed to 2A content before. And ultimately, I think that's one of the best ways for us to help spread the word and to help get more 2A friendly, educational style videos into people's feeds. And for that, I thank you. We need to establish what the purpose of this gun is. I typically group handguns into one of four different categories. And sometimes if it's a do all purpose gun, it can be in multiple categories. So the first category is collector's guns. The second type is a range toy. Then then you have competition guns and then we have self-defense and in self-defense you have a couple different categories mainly you have like concealed carry home defense and then you have duty use now this gun can be all of those things there's different versions that are available for it which i'll show you here in a second but mainly i'm going to be focusing on its practical usability for concealed carry aka home defense you know speaking of self-defense something i've noticed that's very paradoxical is a lot of times we prepare for things that have a very low likelihood of occurring. And then at the same token, we fail to prepare for things that are more likely to happen. Like a good example is some statistics show that we have a 2.35% chance of being a victim of a violent crime. And if you're a victim of a violent crime, then usually that means you have justified use for a firearm. However, with that said, self-defense kind of goes a lot further than defending your life. Over 33% of our population has been a victim of identity theft. And the number keeps going up because of these little guys called data brokers that we all hate. They essentially get our information and then they sell it on the internet. Just try this. Whenever this video is over, just go to Google, type in your name, your full name, and put parentheses on the outside of it. And let me know down in the comments what actually pops up. More likely than not, you're gonna find a bunch of websites that not only have your full name, but they're also gonna have your full address, email address, possibly your health health records. In addition to that, they're also going to have the names and the addresses of all of your relatives. In the past, I've had my identity stolen three times in my life, and it was a really difficult process to get all this stuff kind of figured out. And even though I was able to get them removed and it was a pain in the butt, I didn't really have a way to prevent that from happening again in the future. So that's why I've been using Aura, which is the sponsor of today's video. So whenever I signed up for Aura, what it did was I filled out all my information and it immediately showed me like 18 different data brokers that had my information and are selling it. And they're actually actively going through those and getting me opted out of all of those lists that sell our information. But essentially Aura is an all-in-one package where you not only get the identity protection, but they also have antivirus you can download on your computer or your phone. They also have a VPN that protects your location on your IP address if you need that. One of my more favorite features is it has a very secure password manager. Not only will it store your passwords for you, but anytime that it thinks your password is weak or if you reuse the same password, Aura will actually generate 
create you a new password that you don't have to remember. Additionally, they also give you like a million dollars worth of insurance for identity theft. So if anything does happen and somebody racks up a big bill and they're saying you owe it, Aura will cover you with their insurance on that. If you're like me and you value privacy, it's worth checking them out. All you gotta do is go to aura.com forward slash tactical toolbox where you can sign up for a free 14 day trial just to test things out for a while. And I'll also put that link down in the description for you as well. So what makes the Stealth Arms Platypus so advanced? Well, in order to understand what makes it so advanced, you need to understand why it's so significant that they have created one to run Glock Max. If we look back in history, one of the biggest downsides to our standard 1911s is round capacity. The 45 ACP model capped out at about seven plus one rounds, and then the nine millimeter models capped out around 10 plus one rounds. And that's simply not enough rounds, especially when you consider their full-sized guns. And these guns stay like that all the way from 1911 until the 1980s. Hi, I'm Lenny McGill. In the 1980s, a lot of the competition shooters started getting annoyed with having to swap magazines so often because the 1911 makes a beautiful competition gun. It's perfectly balanced. It has the best trigger of any other handgun ever made, but they were limited. And so a company called Para Ordnance decided to go to the drawing board and create one of the first double stack 1911s. And by 1993, a little company known as STI, we know them today as Staccato, teamed up with Para Ordnance and they released the world's first double stack 1911 AKA 2011. Now, although STI solved the problem of fitting more rounds into the grip of a 1911 style gun, they still had another problem, reliability. So if you remember about six, seven, eight months ago, I did a review on this gun or the other version of this gun. It, it's my own custom 2011 that Legion Precision made for me. It accepts STI AKA Staccato magazines. And if you remember in that video, one of the problems I had is I said, whenever you drop these on the ground, and they hit the feed lips up here, start losing their dimensionality. And when they do that, the gun becomes unreliable. And I was having problems with it locking open on the last round. And that has remained a problem for a very long time with 2011s. In fact, I had to find a video that showed me how to fix this by bending it and using pliers, some calipers to make these run correctly. So you either had a choice of fixing it or trashing them and buying new mags. Which brings me to my second problem historically with standard 2011 mags is they're not cheap. Typically they run anywhere from $50 all the way up to $150, depending on the brand and what the purposes are for. Not only that, but the price went up when you wanted to add more capacity to these. So what makes it so important that the Platypus can accept Glock mags is not only are the magazines reliable and you can drop them on the ground, you don't gotta worry about bending them and having to buy new ones or fix them. Them, but they're also incredibly cheap by in comparison to 2011 mags. But that's not the only thing that they did to this gun that makes it advanced. And that's gonna bring me to the co-witness iron sights with the red dot. Whenever you mount a red dot, you have two options. You can directly mount it to the slide or you can use an optic plate. Optic plates work great, but they're not as good as a direct mill. A direct mill allows the red dot to sit much lower and allows your sights to co-witness a lot easier. However, because of the limitations of the mechanics of the slide, you usually have to go with an optics plate if you want to have backup iron sights. Now, the advantage of having an optic plate is if you wanna change the style optic that you wanna put on the gun, you could just simply buy another plate, swap it out. The downside to a direct mill is whatever you choose is what you're stuck with. They've designed something truly unique that I've never seen before on any other mounting system for a 1911-2011. So when I first took the platypus out of the box and I noticed, you know, it has this cover plate on here that has the iron sights like I talked about earlier. Traditionally, with most cover plates, they have screws on the top. You simply unthread them, pull them out, and then you can put your red dot on. But with this one, I couldn't find any screws anywhere. It turns out the way you get this off is hidden right here behind this plate. And at first I was like, man, that's kind of stupid. Then I saw what they did and it was genius. If you notice right here behind where the plate is, there's a little bitty hole above the firing pin channel and you simply pull the screw out, your plate will now lift right off. And I thought this was very fascinating because inside the optics footprint, you'll see a tiny little hole right there. And then on the back side of this plate, you'll see a tiny little dimple. And that screw essentially holds it on. And I was like, well, that's kind of a weird roundabout way to do an optics mount. But then I discovered why. And it all has to do 
with your backup iron sights. If you look at the bottom of these iron sights, you're gonna notice a hole and two little dimples on each side. Those little dimples in that hole coincide right here. So these little dimples are gonna hold the iron sight in place, and now you have a perfect co-witness that you can reverse and use iron sights if you want to. Never seen that before on any other 1911 pistol. Now, the third thing that makes this gun incredibly advanced is the online customizer. I've never seen another handgun manufacturer create a customizer that's as advanced as the configurator that Stealth Arms has created. And the great part about it is it's not laggy or buggy. When you get into the configurator, these are available in two sizes. You have a full size government profile. This one doesn't belong to me. This one belongs to tactical considerations, but this is the full size slide. And then you can get the four and a quarter inch commander size. It then allows you to choose between four different slide cuts. You can get the classic, you can get the chain link, you can get the dual, or you can get the trident. After that, you can choose different types of sights. So you can either choose between white dot sights or fiber optic sights, and then you can choose between three different heights for said sights. Moving down in the configurator, you can now choose between five different optic cuts, depending on what brand and which one you want to run for you. You can also choose to get a threaded barrel, or a non-threaded barrel. And then you can choose the finish on your barrel. So you can choose like black nitride or you can get polished if you want. You can choose to get a tactical rail on the front or no tactical rail. And whether you choose a tactical rail or not, you can also choose between the traditional length dust cover or you can get the full length dust cover. And then on the grip texture, the grip texture is pretty much the same. However, you can choose to get no finger grooves. If you want finger grooves, there's two different types of finger grooves that you can choose from. You can also choose whether or not you want a square or a round trigger guard. You can choose whether you want an ambidextrous or a single safety selector. And then the craziest part about all of this is you can choose endless color combinations, but you can choose different color pins if you want to. You could even change the color of one side of the magazine catch, and then you could do a different color on the other side. You could do different color slide with different color serrations. I mean, the options are endless, and I've never seen that. It's gonna come with two Glock 17 OEM magazines. They're not cheaping out and giving you some aftermarket. Honestly, there's a lot of Glock clones that I've purchased before and they came with PMAGs or something like that. I'm like, man, just give me OEM. You're also gonna get the optic mounting screws if you get an optic ready version. And you're also gonna get a cover plate. So if you don't wanna run an optic, you can just throw the irons on it. And then you're gonna get the co-witness iron sight that I showed you earlier. So let's get into the meat and potatoes and talk about how the heck this thing even shoots at the range. One thing you should be noted, this, at least the four and a quarter inch version, if you take off the light and you take off this red dot, this thing comes in at a really lightweight, like 28, 29 ounces, which is very light for a four and a quarter inch 1911. In fact, I think my Springfield Prodigy four and a quarter inch weighs 32, 33 ounces. And that's gonna be important because whenever you're looking at the recoil impulse, it's gonna look like this gun is recoiling quite a bit. And it is to an extent, but the felt recoil, isn't that bad. It, it does jump a little bit, but you can't feel it. I hope that makes sense. But I went out and I tested this with multiple types of ammo. I tested it with Blazer Brass. I've tested this with some PMC Bronze. I've tested this with some AAC ammo. And not only that, I tested it with OEM Glock mags. I tested it with ETS mags. And then I tested it with the Extendos. And I tested it with the extensions on OEM mags. Didn't have a single malfunction due to that. However, on my third or fourth range trip, I did run into a problem where the gun wasn't locking open on the last round. Why am I off on that? There it is. Why is this thing not locking open today? Ah, lost it on that one. Having an issue with it locking open, don't know if it's me, don't know if it's the ammo, and don't know if it's the mag. OEM Glock mags, this time I'm using a different brand of ammo at 124 grain, we're just gonna see if I get a slide lock. No? Huh. What mag were you using? You try it. 
All right, Mike's gonna try it. Hmm. Weird. Huh. All right. You're dragging the slide. Do uh -huh. that or... Let me yeah. see one more round. Yeah. I'm not dragging that slide. Okay. Was my thumb barely hitting? No, it still didn't lock back though. Oh, weird. All right. <laughs> try it with you. <laughs> this is weird, it might not like my hands. Might be okay, let's... Yeah. There, yeah, there it is. That's what it is. I right. think it's the grip angle and how I'm compensating with it. I think Do what I'm doing is I'm kind of coming off. Yeah, I think that's what it was. Third time. Hold it open. I'm going to pew view you. Right? Oh, no. We used to CGI that. <laughs> pew view. Front to back. There it is. I know what it is now. So it's. All right, at least I got lock open on that. So when I started getting failure to lock open on the platypus, I spent a lot of time thinking something might be off with the gun. And it turns out it's simply my grip. You know, when I grip a handgun, I have my support hand out like this, my thumbs over my thumbs, and then I'm like this. And if you notice something here, I have fleshy like palms. And so what happens is my flesh of my hand is pushing down on this, preventing it from popping up on the last round. And I went and looked at some other 1911s that I have that I haven't had that problem with, like this one here. This doesn't mean this is better or worse, but if you look at this one, this one is the Springfield Prodigy, and you'll notice that my hand doesn't hit it. If you look at this one here, which is the Legion Precision Toolbox Edition, you'll notice that my hand doesn't hit the slide stop slide release. But on this one, it does. And so I asked my friend Mike from Tactical Considerations if I could borrow his full size, because I wanted to see if there's any difference. And his sticks out a little bit more than the others. And then when I grab it and get my proper grip, my support hand simply rides on top of that. So the only way I've really been able to eliminate this is when I have the light on it right here, I simply grab and I push down like this, not on the switch, but on the light itself. And then that allows my support hand to kind of get out of the way, but it's not 100%. So aside from that slide stop slide release getting in the way of my hand, the gun was 100% reliable. But I did something in this testing that I haven't done in pretty much any other video with handguns. Kind of tested the accuracy out a little bit. We have a steel plate out here at 105 yards. We also have another one that's at 220. Let me zoom you in. Here is the target at 220 yards. 105 yards. Let me go for the 220. I can hit it when I'm not on camera. Now off camera, it's funny because Mike from Tactical Considerations was out there with me and we were both shooting at these targets. And off camera, we were hitting the targets a lot more than we did on camera. It's kind of funny how that happens, but just as accurate as I can be. In regards to the recoil impulse, it took a little bit of time to figure out, but I was able to get the cadence down. Not only could I get shots on target doing rapid fire, but I could also do target transitions between the paper targets as well. And I was able to get it pretty quickly and fairly accurately. Something I did notice about this as I was shooting it is it didn't have any break-in period. There was no malfunctions, let's just say, in the first 100 rounds. So like there wasn't no need to get it broken in. The only thing that I did notice that broke in a little bit more after I started shooting it was the trigger. This one settled in right around three pounds and it's a lot lighter than it was the day that I picked it up. So let's get to the cons. The first con that I have is gonna be in the grip. I like the grip texture. I just wish it was a little bit more grippy. Stay tuned, I got a surprise for you. The reason that this bothers me is because this isn't a 2011. You see, 2011s have a modular grip and frame, meaning if you don't like the texture or the angle of your grip, you can simply pull this off buy one from the aftermarket, slap it on, and now you almost have a completely new gun. Well, they couldn't do that with this one because it accepts Glock mags. And so I'm not bashing them for not creating a modular one. I wanna make that very clear. I'm just kind of bummed that it isn't modular. But there would be no point in creating a modular one because none of the aftermarket grip modules that are available will work with Glock mags. So I understand why they didn't. I just wish there was other options available. As I showed you up close earlier, 
I didn't like the slide stop. It just doesn't work for my hands. There's nothing wrong with the gun. It's just the way that my support hand engages the gun. Now, I've already spoken with the owner of Stealth Arms about this, and he's gonna look into this, maybe create some that don't stick out as far, but you can't simply go buy an aftermarket slide stop slide release to put on here because all of the aftermarket slide stop slide releases aren't designed to work with Glock mags, so it is proprietary. So it's a little bit of a bummer that that's not available yet, but I'm hoping that that'll be available soon. This next con is mostly on me, okay? I'm, this isn't really a con with the company. I'm not a fan of the barrel bushing design with the threaded barrel. I ordered one with a threaded barrel because I wanted to test different thread on compensators with this gun. And because it has the barrel bushing on the front, I don't know of any thread on compensators that'll work with it. If you know of any, let me know down in the comments so I can check them out and order them. I would say this, if you're looking to do compensators, don't get the one with the barrel bushing, um, just get the threaded barrel if you wanna use suppressors. Now this next one, isn't really a con either. This is a more of a, this would take things to the next level if they could figure out how to implement it, is if they could figure out how to implement a multi-optic direct mill, kind of like Shadow Systems does, and I think there's a couple of other companies that have figured it out, that would make things so much nicer because then you're not stuck with one red dot. Thankfully, a lot of those cons are about to be eliminated because I'm gonna show you some stuff that Stealth Arms hasn't even released yet, and I did get their permission to release this. So earlier, I mentioned I didn't like the fact that it wasn't a modular grip because I'm, although I like this grip texture, I would like a little bit more grip texture. And because it's made of metal, I can't simply stipple it. I could just wrap grip tape around it. They're coming out with a new grip texture and the dang thing is beautiful. So this is called the prickle grip. So essentially it's gonna be a more aggressive texture, but not only that, look how much more beautiful it looks. Even in addition to that, I configured this one where the frame was a different color and the grip was a different color. And you can even see on the mag catch how they even looked at the detail of where that line goes. So the mag catch is actually two different colors to blend in perfectly. So it's little pieces of detail that really stick out to me. The other con that I had about the barrel bushing and not being able to test compensators on here, they're now gonna come out with a bull barrel and the bull barrel will eliminate the barrel bushing. And so I might have to get another one of these with the new grip and with the bull barrel that's threaded because I do wanna test comps and I would love to see what that new grip feels like. And then the third thing that they're coming out with for this is custom serial numbers. It's a hundred dollar add-on, but if you want a custom serial number, you can now do that. So let's talk about mag extensions real quick because sometimes when I get these guns that take Glock mags that aren't Glocks, sometimes when you go with mag extensions, they don't wanna work, especially when there's a mag well involved. But every single extended magazine that I use worked flawlessly with it. I didn't have any interference issues between the mag well and the extension itself, which is something that I, if I'm gonna see a problem, I'm gonna run into it. I'll make sure to have links to my favorite extensions over at the parts list, just in case you wanna check those out. Now, when it comes to holsters, there's only one holster I have that really works with stuff like that. And this is my one of my favorite holsters. It's a universal appendix rig. And I've talked about this in multiple videos, but it works with any gun that has a Surefire X300 light on it. And this one, it fits perfectly. Not only does this work perfectly, but you can see that it even it covers up the mag release as well. So you don't accidentally drop a mag while you're carrying it. But let's see how this thing conceals. Put this guy on. All right, if this thing's gonna print, like you'll see it because this shirt cast a lot of shadows, but there it is. You can't see anything. Honestly, if I was out in public, I would have a, I would turn my belt to the side because the buckle's sticking out or I would get a different belt, but I could conceal with this, no problem. Press out and shoot, it's not a big deal. So now the question is, would I carry it? And I'm gonna answer that no for two reasons. Number one, I don't carry guns that have an external safety. I don't train enough with an external safety to trust myself to carry with it. So that's reason number one. And even if I was good enough and trained with an external safety, I wouldn't carry this one until I can get this slide stop slide release figured out so I don't get any malfunctions from accidentally riding it. Aside from that though, 
other people are carrying it. For example, the other day I did a podcast with Administrative Results. If you guys haven't seen his channel, you should go check him out. But he has a second channel called Managerial Outcomes. He's doing a podcast on it. So anyways, when I arrived there, we were both kind of taking our guns out, setting them on the table. And he did a review recently on the platypus and he's actually carrying it every single day right now. If this didn't have those two issues with the external safety that I don't like and with this thing right here, I would 100% carry it and I would carry it with an appendix holster. And that brings us to, would I buy this knowing what I know now with my own money? Yes and no. Let's pretend I don't have issues with this slide stop slide release. Yes, however, if I would have bought this version and then I saw the new one that was coming out, I would be kind of bummed. I would have had a little bit of buyer's remorse if I would have got this one first and then that one came out. So that's just my two cents. Overall, it's a phenomenal gun. It's worth the price point that they're asking for it because of all the advanced features on it and because it accepts Glock mags. But that's just my opinion. I have a sample size of one. However, if you want to see another awesome nine millimeter double stack 1911 or 2011 to check out, go check out this video right here because I go into a lot of detail about it. But until next time, guys, I love you. You guys stay sexy.